We have with us Dr. Ashwin who will be demonstrating the extrusion cannula assisted levitation technique also known as a ECAL to retrieve any IOL which has dropped onto the retina. Now this is a 60 year old patient who came to us with posteriorly dislocated 3 piece IOL and a pre-op visual acuity of 3 by 60. We start off by measuring the white to white diameter of the cornea using a caliper. The flaps are usually positioned 180 degrees apart. Using the glued IOL marker, we used to mark the site of the scleral flap. An etrocar anterior chamber maintainer is inserted 0.5 mm behind the limbus. A 22 gauge needle is then used to make the sclerotomies on either side. A side port entry is made and a 25 gauge vitrector is used to remove the residual cortex. And as the pupil is small and due to poor visualization, we decide to use iris hooks. Vitrectomy ports are then made, and after access to the posterior segment, which is stained with triamcinolone, thorough vitrectomy is done to ensure that there are no adhesions to the IOL. The vacuum for vitrectomy is kept between 300 to 400, and the extrusion cannula is then advanced towards the IOL, taking care not to press the suction foot pedal. Once the cannula makes contact with the IOL, the suction foot pedal is pressed and the IOL is gradually lifted up into the pupillary area. Once the IOL is in the pupillary plane, we use a glued IOL forceps going through the sclerotomy is created. We grab the haptic and externalize them on either side. After stabilizing the haptics with a silicon plug, a 26 gauge needle is used to create a chariot's pocket. through which the haptic is tucked and secured now the same is done on the other side and now the posterior segment is examined to rule out any hemorrhages tears or breaks once the glued iol is done we proceed with performing the single pass four through pupilloplasty technique here we use a tenoproline suture which is passed through the proximal iris and railroaded through a 26 gauge needle which is passed through the distal end of the iris A loop of the suture is then brought out through the distal incision and the end of the suture is passed into the loop four times and then the two external ends are pulled away from each other thereby bringing the iris into a position. Once the pupilloplasty is complete, fibrin glue is applied under the scleral flaps and the flaps are secured followed by conjunctival closure over the flaps.